eye to eye with thyroid eye disease. Graves and Hashimoto's diseases. Hi, Dr. So Parker again. Welcome to section two, video two of PESA Productions Thyroid Eye Disease 10 part series. As always, we strongly recommend that you watch this series at least once in the order in which it was intended. If you haven't already viewed the previous videos, you're strongly encouraged to do so first. The material in this series is meant to be easily understood. Parts, however, may be somewhat dense and you may wish to review particular sections. If you have suggestions on how to improve this series, we welcome your comments. You may find us on the web at www.plasticeyesurgery.com, email us at info at pesahouston.com, write to us at Plastic Eye Surgery Associates, 3730 Kirby Drive, Suite 900, Houston, Texas, 77098, or telephone us at 713-795-0705. In this section, section two, entitled Autoimmune Thyroid Disorder, we are discussing the autoimmune character of thyroid disorders associated with eye changes. In the second video of this section, we discuss Graves and Hashimoto's diseases. Graves disease is a very unfortunate name, since for many people it conjures images of cemeteries, terminal illnesses, headstones, and death. Although the sudden onset of thyroid disease can be serious, Recognized and treated cases are rarely life-threatening. Diseases are often named after the person who is believed to first describe them or by the symptoms the disorder creates. In 1835, Robert James Graves described a disorder with five characteristic features. Enlarged thyroid gland seen as a bulging in the neck called a goiter. Bulging eyes, so-called exophthalmus. Eyelid retraction which we'll describe later, irregular heartbeats or cardiac palpitations, female gender. So if a person doesn't have all five of these characteristics, for example, if a person is male, then that person doesn't really have what Graves described, and so technically, he doesn't have Graves' disease. So if a person doesn't have all five of these characteristics, but only, say, three, simply a goiter, bulging eyes, and eyelid retraction, then you might say that person has Baysdow's disease, described by Carl Baysdow in 1840. So should we call the disorder Baysdow's disease? Some physicians do. In fact, some will call it Baysdow-Graves disease, especially in the scientific and medical literature. However, an association between just two characteristics, goiter and bulging eyes, was first entered into written literature nearly 700 years before Graves and Baysdow were even born. In 1110, Said Ismail al Jurjani's description of this association appeared in Persian writings. However, if one depended upon reading the English language, then in 1786, Caleb Hillier Perry described the same association between an enlarged thyroid and bulging eyes. So perhaps those who speak English should call this Perry's disease. Whereas the Italians could have called it Flagiani disease after his description in 1802. Or perhaps Testa's disease described in 1810 when Robert Graves was still only 14, 25 years before Graves' publication. Although all of these learned men were responsible for recognizing the association between the eyes and the thyroid, Nobody advocates calling this Aldrigiani, Peri, Flagiani, Testa, Baysdow, Graves disease. It is now apparent why Graves disease is not an appropriate name. In addition to the disorder being named after the wrong person, many people, including some physicians, use the term Graves disease to mean a whole myriad of different things. Common incorrect uses include a person with hyperthyroidism, Remember, Graves wrote nothing at all about the thyroid status in these people. Hyperthyroidism is not a defining characteristic of the original description. A person with any thyroid disorder and measurable thyroid hormone abnormality. Someone who has an autoimmune antibody against the TSH receptor. Someone with a goiter or enlarged thyroid. Someone with bulging eyes. 
The confusion that arises from the misuse of the names Graves' disease can be very frustrating, since all of the different uses often represent very different disorders. Therefore, when someone says, I have Graves' disease, it's very difficult to know what is meant. Therefore, we should move away from using the term Graves' disease because the name is already too ingrained in cu current culture, meaning too many different things, even among physicians. Similarly, Hashimoto's disease is also an often misused term. Some use it to mean that a person has a low level of thyroid hormone, or a person has a measurable inhibitory autoimmune antibody, or that there is an inflammation of the thyroid gland. Many people are told that they have both Graves and Hashimoto's. All in all, Hashimoto's disease is another term that we are better off no longer using. So then what do we call this disease process? What do we call the complicated array of autoimmune disorders that affect both the thyroid and the eyes? Over the last several decades, many terms have been used and eventually discarded. The reason we are stressing this point is that today, many people use the internet to gain more information about various topics, and it is sometimes difficult to know whether various names such as endocrine orbitopathy and Graves' disease actually refer to the same disorder or not. Although many other terms have been used to describe the eye changes in association with an autoimmune thyroid disorder, the most commonly accepted term today is thyroid eye disease, which is a very broad term suggesting a nonspecific relationship between thyroid and eye troubles encompassing all such disorders. Thyroid eye disease is often abbreviated as TED.